Today we're looking at reconstruction plans. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. So immediately following the Civil War, the nation entered into a time period known as Reconstruction as the country tried to rebuild itself after four years of civil war. The war came to an end in April of 1865, and as the Union was celebrating, they also began to debate how to readmit admit to the Union these southern states that had seceded four years earlier. Just as the debate began, the assassination of President Lincoln occurred on April 14, 1865. The nation again was thrown into upheaval as several plans to reunite the country were put forward. But before his death, both Lincoln and Congress had proposed plans to reunite the country. Lincoln proposed what became known as the 10% plan. As long as 10% of the voters within a state that seceded took a loyalty oath to the Union, then the state could form a new state government and adopt a new state constitution that banned slavery within that state. So Lincoln wished to be very lenient on southern states and offer amnesty or basically forgive southerners that were willing to take an oath of loyalty to the Union. Lincoln really saw no benefit in taking revenge on the South for what had happened. He simply wanted the nation to be whole again. Many say that John Wilkes Booth, who of course assassinated Lincoln, believing he was doing the South a favor, actually was the biggest enemy the South ever had because by killing Lincoln, he killed any hope of having a peaceful reconstruction of the country. As for Congress's plan before Lincoln was assassinated, it was much more severe and really sought to punish the South for what had happened during the war. Congress was controlled by the radical Republicans and were really led by Thaddeus Stevens, who was a member of the House of Representatives and was from Pennsylvania. Stevens was a staunch abolitionist and really believed the entire South really had to be torn apart and rebuilt before it could be brought back into the Union. In July of 1864, before the Civil War was even over, Congress had passed the Wade Davis Bill, which set forth many requirements for readmittance. Among these were over 50% of the state's white males must swear an oath of, oath of allegiance to the Union, which they called this oath the Ironclad Oath, which was much more strict in its wording and included things like swearing that you had never fought against the Union during the war. In addition, only white males who swore that oath and had never fought for the Confederacy could vote in elections within the state to establish a new state government. And then any former Confederate could not hold any public office. And then lastly, all new state constitutions had to, of course, ban slavery. Lincoln and the radical Republicans in Congress could not see eye to eye on how to bring states back into the Union. Fortunately, though, they did see eye to eye on banning slavery in all states in the U.S. Constitution. On January 31st, 1865, the 13th Amendment was passed, abolishing the institution of slavery in America. Ratifying or approving the amendment became another requirement for readmittance of a state into the Union that both Lincoln and Congress agreed upon. Just a few months later, after the 13th Amendment was passed, of course, the Confederacy surrendered, and then Lincoln was shortly thereafter assassinated. Upon Lincoln's death, Vice President Andrew Johnson, who was a Southerner from Tennessee, became the new President of the United States. He favored an even more lenient plan than Lincoln had endorsed. Johnson's plan, called Restoration, or the Presidential Reconstruction Plan, allowed states to be readmitted once they ratified or approved the 13th Amendment, but then Southerners could take a very simple loyalty oath and become citizens again and be forgiven of any actions they took against the Union during the war. Confederate leaders would have to personally request a pardon from Johnson himself, which he kind of gave out very easily. And so southern states began to follow Johnson's plan. And by the end of 1865, all former Confederate states except Texas were ready to be readmitted. This very lenient approach generated a lot of tension between President Johnson and the radical Republicans in Congress. But worse was that there was no restrictions on who could be voted into public office. And so many former Confederate leaders returned to leadership positions within the United States government. For example, the former vice president of the Confederacy, Alexander Stevens, was voted back into the U.S. Senate. 
And despite the fact that slavery had been abolished, former Confederate states began to pass laws within their own states that heavily discriminated against former enslaved African Americans. Since, state, since states could not pass laws concerning slavery, they called these laws black codes. These codes included laws such as African Americans and whites could not intermarry, African Americans could not serve on juries or, or could not testify in court against a white. African Americans could not own land and also required African Americans to sign contracts with landowners to work on that land and if they did not have one of these contracts they could be declared as a vagrant and could be arrested for that. This system was really an effort to keep African Americans enslaved even though slavery was abolished in the 13th Amendment. By 1866, the Radical Republicans had really caught on to what was happening and eliminated the Black Codes and also basically eliminated Johnson's restoration plan and started Reconstruction over again from scratch. But we'll have to cover that in another bell ringer. So with that, hopefully you learned something and thanks for watching. <laughs>